Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Exciting video today, something I've never done before on my channel, I've never shown, is how to fit cathedral rafter beams. It can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, this is especially gonna be a video for those of you who do this professionally. Time is money. Fitting these things with as few trips as possible up and down the scaffolding is essential. But we've got our beams over here. The recent video I uploaded showed how I fabricated these beams. They're a little bit smaller than what I typically do. Um, usually it's like a seven inch wide beam. These are only three inches wide, but uh, let's get right into it. So guys, to fit these beams, there's a few things that we're trying to do, and it's important to understand what the goal is to understand why we're going about the process the way we are. The first thing that we're trying to do is find the length of our rafter. The second thing we're trying to do is find the angle cut so that we can make the top and bottom cuts on these rafters fit exactly to our ridge beam and to the drywall. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do first here. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna cut a template piece or a pattern, whichever you prefer to call it. Now I know that this roof pitch is an 11-12 pitch, so you do the math on your construction calculator, which I believe is 42 and a half degrees. So I start off just cutting my angle cut, 42 and a half degrees, top and bottom on this template. This is gonna be a little bit shorter than my finished dimension, and that's okay. You just wanna get a rough measurement, take about an inch off of it and cut that as your template piece. The process for fitting these beams involves a lot of tacking in place. So I've got my template here. My blocking is already installed. It's anchored to the ceiling really well. I'm gonna go ahead and slide my template all the way down to the bottom here so that it's resting on the bottom right there. I'll come up here, take my drill. I'm gonna tack this in place. So now that's in place. What I'm gonna do is come down here and check and see what this angle looks like. Obviously this looks really bad right now. This is gonna be common. You're gonna have this, the drywall's gonna kick out, your ridge beam is not gonna be perfectly plumb all the time. So it's always a matter of trying to fit uh, this, these pieces and get the angle cut just right. So what I like to do is I mark on this template how much I need to add to this cut either at the top or the bottom to make it fit perfectly. A lot of you guys have probably seen me use this gauge before, but I like to use this gauge right here and it helps me get it fit just right. So this is a strong eighth, maybe even 532nd that I need to add to this top cut. So I'm just gonna put five plus five 30 seconds up here, and then whenever we cut our beam, I can make that adjustment. Now, we'll come right back up here. I'm gonna show you this closer up in a second, but I've got a mark right here, and I'm making a mark on the ceiling. I've got a mark on the beam and a mark on the ceiling now. And you'll notice how I'm gonna use that to get the length in a second. So now I'm gonna unscrew that. I'm gonna slide it all the way up so now I'm nice and tight to my ridge beam and I'm gonna tack it again. Now this ridge beam was a huge LVL. I had to glue up the sides of this ridge beam. It's about 17 inches in height. So it's not gonna be perfectly plumb. We're gonna have to cut every angle up here to make it custom fit to the beam because it's gonna have some variation. I've got a gap on the bottom right here, so I'm gonna take my gauge again, and it looks like I've got an, another strong eighth down here on the bottom that I need to add. So I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna put plus five thirty seconds again so that I know how to adjust that cut down here as well. I'm also gonna make sure that I'm erasing the, the measurements from my previous cuts whenever I cut the other rafters. Now some of you guys who do this for a living, you're already wondering, okay, when do you scribe the beam into the ceiling in this process? 
That's the second part. Right now, we're just trying to get the angles on the top and bottom and the length. The second part of the operation will scribe the beam to the ceiling. You'll notice that there's big gaps above the, the top of this board the whole way. Every piece always has to be fit to the ceiling without question. I'll show you that in a little bit. Now let's talk a little bit, how do we get the exact length that we need? I mentioned a little bit ago that I make a mark on my template piece. Whenever I have it pushed all the way down, I make a mark on the ceiling that coincides with the mark on my template. Then I push it all the way up, I make a second mark on the ceiling. So what I can do with those two marks, I can measure how far apart they are. In this case, I'm an inch and three quarter apart between these two marks. That's what I need to add to this template piece to get my total overall length. It's a great way to do it. It's really easy. Um, and again, I'll just kind of show it here to demonstrate the process to find the length. I'm making a mark on my template. It's slid all the way down. I mark it on the ceiling once. I slide it all the way up. Mark it on the ceiling again. I take the space between those two marks and add it to the total length of this template piece. And that's what my finished rafter length is gonna be. So we're gonna take our template down then. Just one screw again using to tack this in place and we'll take this to our, uh, our work piece, make our marks and make the end cuts and length cuts. Just a real quick point for those of you guys who do this professionally, you'll notice how I've got my scaffolding set up. This is a game changer for doing work like this. I've got these planks and they're set up in such a way that I can walk the entire way up and down the ceiling and this allows me to work by myself and work really efficiently. Um, I'm used to doing this, I do it all the time, and it's just an absolutely essential part of my workflow. You will notice this is what would be called a double ladder scaffolding. A typical mason scaffolding will have one side open on each of these. On these yellow ones, I had this custom welded, so I've got bars going the entire length across. That allows me to be able to put a plank wherever I need it. Um, and that's really important for the way I work with doing a lot of ceiling work and stuff like that. So that's huge, highly recommend it, double ladder scaffolding. The blue stuff I bought off Scaffolding Scaffold Express and it came with the double ladder. Uh, I didn't have to custom weld it, but the yellow I did. Um, but you want to, have the absolute minimum amount of steps up and down this scaffolding as possible. If you're forgetting tools and stuff like that, it's gonna take way longer. So this whole system that I'm showing you, it's designed to be able to get a perfect result in the least amount of trips up and down the scaffolding as possible. So I'm gonna grab one of my beams and I'm just gonna bring it over here to my miter saw stand the nice thing about this particular size beam, because it's only three inches wide, I can have it pre-assembled and I can cut all the way through it just with the miter saw. A lot of times I would have to be cutting on one side with a circular saw or the HKC track saw uh, and then flip it over and doing a lot of other stuff. This is a really easy one because I can just bam, cut right through it. One thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video, Whenever you're selecting your template piece that you're gonna use, you want to orient it so that the crown is down. And I actually intentionally try to select a, a board that's got a little bit of a crown in it because I want this piece to be making contact at the top and at the bottom. And then that way, if there is a little bit of a bump in the ceiling from a, a drywall butt joint or something like that, it's not gonna make my template piece rock on the ceiling as much. So that's something to look for. Select one with a little bit of a crown so that you can make contact top and bottom. Now, to start cutting our beam, I'm gonna align the bottom edge of my template piece with the bottom edge of the beam. So we're good here, 
I'm going to come down here and do the same thing so we're nice and aligned. Now this is where you'll see I've got my measurement written on here that I need to add. So it's not a matter of simply marking the angle on here that matches this. I also want to note that I'm adding 530 seconds to the top of this cut. So I'll take my handy little gauge here. I use this thing so much, it's crazy. And it's gonna say 530 seconds right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make a mark right up here at that point. So I know I need to add that much to the top of this cut. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then we'll move to marking the length and the top cut. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this first. So now to make this cut, basically what I'm trying to do is take the shadow line uh, on my, my light and blade and align that with the mark that I have here on the bottom as well as up on the top with the mark that I made there. Uh, I do want to be taking all of that pencil line, but this looks pretty good right here, I think. So I'll go ahead. I've got it locked down in place. We'll make the cut. Okay, so we just cut our bottom cut. Now I need to mark the length and the top cut. We're basically gonna do that at the same time here. If you remember, we're adding an inch and three quarters to the total length of our template piece. So what I'm gonna do right now is from the end that I just cut here, I'm gonna hook on and I'm gonna mark at an inch and three quarters right there. And then we'll line up the bottom of our template piece with that mark and that'll give us the correct length. It's very important that whenever you're doing this that you always remember to add uh, to the bottom here. And part of the reason that I'm doing this process the way that I am with cutting this first and then putting my template back on is because it helps remind me to add that measurement in there Basically, if you forget to do that and you just mark the, the bottom cut and the top cut and you forget to add that, you've wasted a beam because it's gonna be too short and you're gonna have to redo a whole beam. So very important to remember that. If there's one thing you're gonna screw up in this whole process, it's probably this right here. Okay, moving on here. We've got our template set in place, inch and three quarter offset. We'll come up here to the top. I've made this flush with the top here. So now we're gonna go through the same process of getting the correct plumb cut on the top of our beam. As you can see here with my sloppy handwriting, I've got noted that we need to add 530 seconds to the bottom cut on this. I'm gonna take my gauge and mark that right there. So we'll cut from this point to this point and that should be a perfect fit. just completed the first part of this fitting. We found our angle cuts and our length. The second thing that we need to do is scribe this beam to the ceiling. So we'll be taking this up there again, marking our scribe line, bringing it down, cutting the scribe line, and then finally putting it back up, installing it. I don't know a way to get the length, the angle cut, and the scribe line marked all in one shot personally, so this is how I do it. I do my length plumb cuts first, and then I bring it up again and mark the scribe line after I have that all perfect. So my preferred method on something like this is to use blue tape and some kind of a razor scribe or marking knife to cut my scribe line. Um, we'll just put a piece of tape all the way across the top here and then we'll take it up on the scaffolding and tack it in place again. Okay, here we are back up on the scaffolding again. 
getting ready to fit this in place. I've got a cabinet screw tacked on the top here. I've got my drill on my side. And then hopefully this, I won't have to wrestle it too much to get it to uh, go in. There we go. There. So this pine material, it's a little difficult to work with. So getting it to slide over my, my bracket there is a little bit tricky and you can see like it's holding itself in place right now just from the friction. But I wanna take a look down here. I wanna make sure that I've got it pressed in place. One thing whenever you're fitting these in place, keep in mind you've got a cut up at the top that is not gonna allow the top to fall down. So if you wanna be working on one end and be positioned at one end, it's the bottom because you can put it up there and the ridge beam is gonna keep that top from falling down. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and tack this in place now and then I'll go up and check the top. I think I'm actually just gonna start down here and tack it because I may have to pull that top down a little bit. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. I'm gonna look at the top. So I actually, it was pushed up a little bit high, which was, had a gap up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down. And now my cut is just right on the money. It looks perfect. This is where I can go ahead and start scribing now. So I got it tacked on one side down there. I'm gonna go ahead and tack it on the other side about right here. And we'll cut our scribe line. Now you'll notice at this point, we've got a gap all the way, even though we're tight down here at the bottom, we've got big gaps the whole way up and down the beam. We've got to scribe this to the ceiling. It's never a matter of whether or not you'll have to. In my mind, you always have to scribe the beams to the ceiling. So let's talk about scribing tools. Uh, these are just what I always pretty much have in my tool belt all the time because we're doing a ton of scribing. Razor scribe. It's got a razor in here. You'll notice I put the tape on here. That allows me to scribe along the ceiling. It'll cut the tape. You pull the top half of the tape off and that's your line to cut to. We've also got the easy scribe here. This uses a pencil lead in the end. If I didn't have the tape on here and I wanted to just mark a line and cut to a pencil line, I could use that. I prefer to cut to tape. The reason is it leaves a much more precise line for me to cut to. The third option that I have here is a hawk marking knife. This is a nice uh, sharp knife that you can use in conjunction with an offset block. So if I knew I wanted to scribe a certain amount off, I could cut a block to width and then just run this up and down the ceiling to cut that line. We'll probably use this on the next beam on the other side. We'll talk about that in a minute. For this one, I'm just gonna use my razor scribe. You'll notice this has a blade that comes out the end and you can adjust it to different levels for different thicknesses of scribe. So this is where I've got it set right now. And then I'll just run this right along the ceiling and it'll cut my tape. So coming back here, just starting at the bottom. We'll cut the line and just to show you what this looks like and right now, now you'll see I can pull this tape off and that is my cut line uh, that I'll make here. So you know how to scribe. The question is how much do you take off with your scribe cut? And basically what I'm just doing here is I'm selecting an amount to take off that ensures that if there's a really bad dip or hump going on somewhere, I'm gonna be able to take off enough material that there's not a gap. So that's kind of the strategy involved here. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth into all the different ways to scribe, but that's kind of my thought process. Okay, moving on to our second side over here. 
you can see again the scaffolding. I can just walk right down the whole thing and cut my scribe line in just a matter of seconds. It just makes this whole thing way more efficient having a good scaffolding set up. All right, to pop the beam down now, I'm just taking the screws out that I used to tack it in place. And being that it went in as hard as it did, I'm probably gonna have to give this thing a nice tug to make it come down. So again, I've got the bottom, the top is not gonna fall down because the ridge beam's holding it in place. Give it a little wiggle here, pull it down. See how that top, the ridge beam is holding it in place. Even though I'm holding it down here, it's a, just a safe way to uh, take these things on and off. Slide it down. And we'll go make our cut. So here we are pulling off the tape to give ourselves a nice scribe line to cut to. So there's a lot of different ways that we could use to cut our scribe line here. I like to keep it simple, keep it lean, use basic tools. Circular saw and then a block plane. The strategy is I'll go along with the circular saw and make my cut so that it's just a little bit proud of my tape line here. And then I'll take the rest off with the block plane. It goes really quick and it's extremely precise. A little bit of technique, I move the circular saw over to a 15 degree bevel. The fact that it's beveled will allow me to use the block plane more easily to just take off a little bit of material and sneak up on my cut line. When I'm using the circular saw, you'll notice I typically start out by grabbing the handle for the blade guard. I flip that up and hold it in place to get started. And then once we're going, you'll notice that I use my fingers up here on this front edge and I kind of guide the saw with my fingers running up against the wood and holding the uh, base plate at the same time. And that helps me very accurately control the saw so that I'm not overcutting or anything like that. So I'm gonna pop in my hearing protection. I will tell you, you eat a lot of sawdust whenever you do this. It's just part of it. So you're gonna want safety glasses too on something like this. So like I said, guys, you eat a ton of sawdust, you're gonna get completely covered. Um, I had put the saw away over the weekend, so I had my depth adjusted basically all the way down. I should have had it a little bit shallower. Um, I'll fix that on the next pass. Anyways, after that, I usually will take my blower and just blow myself off because it keeps falling in your eyes and everything else. Now the whole length, I left just a little bit of meat past my tape cut line, and now I'll take my block plane and just sneak up on that tape. And it's nice because you can use this block plane to just really get it dialed in perfectly to that tape cut line.
Okay, this end is cut. I'll pull the tape off now. And then I'll have to swing the beam around so that I can do the exact same thing on the other side. Plop it on there. Pull my tape off. Okay, moment of truth, time to install it. I will say, whenever you're pulling this up the scaffolding, this is the finished beam now, so we don't wanna be damaging it. This, uh, the scribe lines up here are gonna be a little bit delicate because they're cut at a bevel, so I don't wanna just drag this thing across the scaffolding. Same for the bottom edge, I don't wanna be making any marks um, from dragging it across the scaffolding. So I kind of carefully try and pick it up and get it into place without uh, causing any damage getting it up here in the process. All right, moment of truth. So we'll flip it over here. You wanna make sure you've got your nail gun close by. I like to put the top in first, slide it up there, wiggle it so it finds its way over. like butter. So we wanna make sure that we're pulled down so that we got our cuts as best as they can be. Coming in here, we wanna make sure that our top is nice and tight to the ceiling. And then I also am gonna look up top and make sure that looks good as well. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack the bottom now. 15 gauge nails. Oops, hit a screw. Now I'm gonna go up to the top and make sure that it looks good. It's really tight, I like it. We'll just work our way down, nailing it off. Okay, that's it. So first thing I wanna point out, uh, the scribe cut to the ceiling looks great. It's very important the whole way up that we have a nice tight fit to the ceiling. Very happy with that. It's not rocket science. Once you know how to scribe, it should be perfect every time. Now here, if you'll look at our cut that we made to the wall here, I'm very pleased we're tight bottom, tight top, and good scribe line up here. However, if we do come around to this other side, I wasn't quite as pleased with this side. Um, it's, it's not bad by any means, but it's not perfect. And what I will actually do here, because this is meeting drywall, I'll take masking tape, and then I'll actually caulk that and then pull the tape off so it'll still look perfect even though it's not. So it looks great. We've got a nice tight fit to the ceiling. You will notice up here, Nice tight fit as well on the top. There's a little bit of a gap above the ridge beam here. Um, it pushed the drywall up a little bit, but sometimes uh, that happens and it's just the best that I can do. 
So we're gonna move now to this other side, get this next long beam fitted. It'll be the last long beam that we've got up here. Everything's coming together really well. You can see these other ones that I've got installed. They're cut nice and tight and scribed nice and tight to the ceiling as well. All right guys, so we've got through our first beam. Now we're gonna move on going through this second beam here that I wanna show you. But I wanna talk a little bit about whether you should do this type of work with one man or have a helper. My personal philosophy is that it's very inefficient to have a helper for this type of work. And for me, it's just not very necessary. To me, if I have a helper on this type of job, they're gonna be standing around watching me 75% of the time. And then the 25% of the time that they're actually doing something, I'm gonna be standing there watching them. To me, climbing up and down the scaffolding is just part of the process. It's part of the job with this type of work. So just going, over, <clears throat> just going over real quickly in review, there's gonna be three trips up and down the scaffolding to do this. Your first trip is gonna be with your template piece, getting your length um, and your angles marked. Second trip up the scaffolding is gonna be with your beam after it's been cut to length to mark the scribe line, and your third trip up is gonna be the final installation. You'll find that whenever you do this, the process actually is pretty simple and it goes pretty quick. You just gotta know the process and work through the steps on each beam and it's really not too bad. Okay guys, so I've got my last beam section tacked in place here. You'll notice that the bottom of this beam is even uh, with the bottom of the other beam right here. You'll notice, however, if we go over and look at this beam, I've got about an inch of space there. So over here, what I want to do is I wanna scribe enough off of this beam that I have the same margin, or at least pretty close to the same margin underneath here. On the last beam, we used this razor scribe tool. Works great. On this beam, I wanna choose the amount that I'm gonna take off. So I'm gonna use my hawk knife with a couple of blocks. I've already figured out what I need to take off. I'll run the hawk knife up the wall like this. That'll cut the tape and allow me to pull that off and have my scribe line there. Now let me show you how bad this ceiling is. So if you'll look at what I'm gonna be scribing off off the top of this board, you'll see how the fit actually is. If we come up to the top here, you'll see we've got a gigantic gap above this beam. That is because, pardon the terrible camera work here, I'm trying to run the gimbal. Um, we've got a big crown going down with these rafters. So we're basically tight midway up. And then once we get all the way up to the top here, we've got like three quarters of an inch. So this is just life. Um, we'll scribe it and we'll make it look like it's perfect anyways. So guys, you'll see if you look at this beam and you follow the margin between the tape, the cut line, and where we end up up here with taking an eighth off, and on the other end we're taking a solid three quarter off, you can just see how we're often fighting bad things going on with ceilings, and that's where the art of scribing becomes so important. Being able to do that and make it look like it fit perfectly, even though we were dealing with very imperfect conditions, is really what finished carpentry is all about.
There we go. Woo! So guys, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's something that I haven't really shared much of on how to fit beams, but for us who are doing this professionally, being able to perfect this process and get great results is gonna make us have easier days doing this type of work, but also much more profitable and producing high quality work. So I've installed a ton of rafter beams over the years. I've tried a lot of different methods. This is what I've kind of landed on. I'm really curious if anybody does have a method that they think is better or they do slightly different, I'm all ears, I'm happy to learn. So drop a comment, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.